What's going on, you guys? My name is Lloyd. Uh, so we have a special episode of the Single Guy Channel today. We have a special guest here, Mr. Alex Wunsch. So I've known Alex for a bit. I've actually sent him. You, you sent a couple, a couple of my clients. I've sent towards you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, I brought Alex here so we could talk to him a little bit about kind of what he does and you know, the biggest mistakes that guys are making on dating apps right now. A lot of everything being shut has made it difficult for people to go out and talk to people. Not impossible, but it's a lot better if you go, you know how to do the online route. It's almost like having a superpower, wouldn't you agree? It's definitely extremely useful. Yeah. If you, if you don't know what you're doing, you're just gonna waste a lot of time, you're gonna get frustrated, and then you're gonna come to the conclusion that online doesn't work. Yeah. In reality, you're just doing it wrong. Excellent. That's exactly right. Too many guys think it's like, oh, it's not for me, it doesn't work for me, they think maybe their looks is the only thing that's gonna matter. So what do you think are the most important bits that guys need to understand when it comes to their dating profile and actually making it something that a woman would swipe right on or actually like look at it and be like, hey, you know, I actually wanna go out with this guy? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say by far the biggest factor are your pictures. So guys think that, you know, like, oh, you know, I'm fucked in the algorithm, like, you know, because I swipe right five times, swipe left three times, right. or, you know, my bio isn't perfect, but by far the biggest factor are your photos. And if you get that part handled, like you get solid photos, everything else more or less takes care of itself. So right. I think the biggest thing for guys is getting the right kind of pictures. And this is another area where guys get quite confused. So they think that, you know, the right kind of picture is a picture that's taken with a very high quality camera. But that's actually the smallest factor. The two things that really matter when it comes to photos is first of all, the picture looks natural. So it just looks like you were doing some cool activity and someone took a picture of you rather than you're like posing like, mom, take the pic. Yeah, yeah. That's the first thing. Second of all, you have to look good in the photo, right? So you can take, like well, right now sitting here, you can take 100 pictures of me. And in, let's say, most of those, I probably won't look that great. You know, my facial expression will be a little bit off. You know, maybe my hair will be a little bit off. But if you take enough pictures from different angles, you're gonna get one or two where you look good. So the second big component is finding pictures where you look better than you are in real life. Like if you're a seven in real life, you should look like an eight in your photos. For most guys, yeah. if they're seven, they look like a five in their photos. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is for most guys. It's kind of ironic though, because women have, like, take so many more pictures than guys take. Uh, and so I find that theirs is kind of more around what you were saying, where it's like maybe if they're a certain level of attractiveness in real life, they're usually a bit above uh, in terms of a lot of their pictures. Well, the funny thing is, is that kind of what we're talking about, chicks have been doing, you know, for, for like 20, 30 years now. Like, yeah. they, the chicks know angles. They know all this stuff. Like all the stuff, the concepts that we teach, chicks have actually been doing intuitively for a very long time. Yeah. And guys don't know any of it. And when you tell them that their photos are awful, they're like, what? What are you talking? I think this one kind of looks, I'm like, no, dude, this, your profile needs a lot of work. <laughs> So uh, when you're trying to take a photo, how can they get that natural feel that you were talking about earlier? So I would say it comes down to a few things. First of all is almost pretending like a camera is not there. Like, so the mistake guys make, a common question, yeah, what's the best type of pose for a video, for a camp, for a photo shoot, right? <coughs> uh, there's no such thing as the best type of photos. What you want to do is you want to actually almost forget that the camera's there. Yeah. Just try to relax and pretend like whatever. So if we're taking a picture, <laughs> let's say we're taking a picture of me with my dog, right? Yeah. So like, I don't want to be like, Okay, take the picture, right? I just want to actually start playing with my dog, take dozens and dozens of pictures, and then one of them is bound to look pretty good, you know, look natural. The second thing is activity pics are definitely like a big factor. So it's harder to look natural if you're taking a picture or just sitting somewhere. But if you're doing some activity like playing tennis or, you know, you're fucking, you know, just whatever, playing beach volleyball, it's actually hard to look post in that picture because you're doing the activity and you're so yeah. focused on that activity. Yeah. And I noticed like if I'm doing a photo shoot with some of my male clients, I'll just be like trying to take a picture of them. They'll be like, trying to stand or smile in a weird way that's so unnatural. But if they just like I forgot the camera was there for like 10 seconds. They'd probably take a lot better of a picture, right? Yeah, some of the best pictures happen when the person's really not trying to take pictures. Like the person's like, oh, yeah. dude, I don't have time for this. And they're just like, and then like they actually look natural in that photo. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed is that if it, if it looks too posy, so you can come off as like try hard. Um, and also too, women kind of like to look at a guy like from a distance to like check him out a little bit, see what he's doing, see how he acts towards other people. And a lot of that will determine how attractive, um, sorry, how attracted uh, they are towards that guy. So if you can kind of mimic that in, like a, in, a, in a camera photo, um, I think it does. Uh, I think it does wonders, as opposed to like you know maybe going on in a photo shoot or whatever, or hiring somebody tons of money to take. Yeah, pictures generally speaking, I don't. I'm not even a big believer in paying for photo shoots. Like what I always say yeah. is just have you know a friend take some pictures of you in exchange for you taking pictures of him. Like pretty much everyone, if you don't have anyone that can take pictures of you, that's a symptom of a larger problem. You just have no friends, right? But, no friends, or you're not doing enough cool things in your life that you would want to take a 
picture of that, you know what I mean? But even if you're not doing that much cool shit, you can just like kind of fake it. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> I, I, don't ride, I don't ride a motorcycle, but there's a picture of me on a bike in my Tinder photo profile. I was just walking around with, uh, you know, my friend, and then we saw a bike, and I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna knock on this guy's door, see if he'll let me, it's just like a badass bike. He's like, yeah, sure, man, just don't fuck my shit up. I was like, I got you, man. And then, you know, we just took some pictures on the bike, right? So you can just kind of almost like, you'd have to have a real lack of creativity if you can't come up with something. Like another one was, uh, you know, like, uh, we were staying in this really nice place in the and I had this really cool view in the barbecue grill. I'm like, yo, let's just pretend like I'm barbecuing. Like, there's nothing actually on the grill. I'm like, <laughs> the pictures of me, but it looks like, you know, I'm barbecuing and there's a cool backdrop. So, uh -huh. yeah, you can do, go a lot of ways if you're just a little bit creative. Nice. You're in Medellin too. I remember that. Yeah, it's yeah, cool. Yeah. Medellin's a great place. If you guys haven't been, it's you should great, go. It's a great place. <laughs> well, it's been fun being in Miami with you, man. Um, we were chilling the other night. Um, what would you say are the biggest things in general from, not just from dating apps, what do you think are the biggest things in general guys can learn from you or um, the biggest mistakes that you see guys making in general? Oh, man, that's definitely like a fairly uh, long and uh, complex question. We could just pick one of them. I, mean, I would say the biggest the thing that the most one of the biggest mistakes I see most commonly is guys being overly gamey. So when they're texting girls or just in other aspects of yeah. their life. So they this is the way I kind of explain this, right? If you look at it in terms of a spectrum, on one of the spectrum you have being super boring. So this is like, hey, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's your day? Hey, how are you? Hey, what's up? And everyone in the pickup community knows that's wrong, right? Yeah. But what mostly happens, guys go too far in the other direction and yeah. they're trying so hard not to be boring, they just come off as like kind of like pickup robots. It and sounds trying, weird too. Yeah, yeah, they're trying all these fancy gaming lots. Mm -hmm. So I would say it's better to find some nice middle ground. In. It's okay to have normal kind of like, it's okay to ask a chick, hey, how's your day going, right? Or like, yeah, I'm excited to see you. And so many of my clients, they have problems with them. Just, dude, just check in on her, ask her how she's doing. It's, they're like, but shouldn't I say something else? Because they think them in their natural state is not enough. So they have to do something more. But a lot of times you are enough and it's learning to accept that, that I think becomes a, you know, a big part of uh, the coaching process. Yeah, I mean, like you, you see guys like always trying to one up themselves and come up with this perfect line. That's not really natural in a conversation. Like for example, if you and I were sitting down, we're just talking, having a beer. Mm -hmm. Imagine how weird the conversation will get if we're constantly trying to like one up each other. Like, All right, I got to deliver this perfect line. Yeah. Like, like the conversation, ten minutes would sound so fucking weird. It yeah. just doesn't make sense. But guys know that. But then they put all this pressure on themselves when they were chicks. Like guys will always say, oh, I run out of things to say when I'm with a girl. You know, I don't know what to say. But I always say, well, when you're hanging out with your friends, you run out of things to say. Well, no, of course not, man. So it's kind of like if you can just take the pressure off yourself and stop trying so hard, then a lot of the problems start taking care of themselves. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Cool. Well, uh, I think this is a pretty good video so far. We got a couple things. Um, why would guys come to you for advice or, um, you know, what would be the best way for them to get in contact with you and how does that process work for you? So why do guys come to me? Because I'm honest, I'm brutally honest, I'm straight up, and I give you ample examples of my shit working. So you can go on my website and there's like uh, probably close to 100 lay reports with all the screenshots from start to finish. So you have just ample proof and the breakdown of why the stuff I teach works. It's not just like, you know, vague promises. Uh, how they can find me is they can go to my website, playingfire.com. Uh, they can go to my YouTube channel, which will link. Uh, they can go to my Instagram at Real Playing Fire, and just there's so many different ways. We have forums, forums not playing fire, where you can, you know, if you have questions and stuff, you can make a post. Mm -hmm. and, you know, usually I try to get back to everyone. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for doing this with me, Alex. It's a pleasure being in Miami, hanging out with you. <coughs> it's like if my voice doesn't crack too soon. Um, and yeah, if you guys want to check him out, we'll put some links in the description box below. Thanks a lot, you guys. Good luck out there. Salut.